Dear viewers, you are most welcome to the Experts Corner. And the major objective of this channel is to let knowledge go viral. So if you haven't yet subscribed, this is the right time. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on more of our upcoming sessions. My name is Veronica Rose and the world tour is still on. Today, our guest is based in North Carolina and his name is George. So um, George is a cyber threat hunter and a host of a Cyber Black podcast. He is going to tell us more about himself. George. Hey, Veronica, thank you for having me on the show. Um, uh, yeah, my name is George McPherson. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. I've been in uh, cybersecurity for about seven and a half years. Uh, my main job is a um, cybersecurity analyst uh, with, with additional job roles as threat hunting. Yeah. Um, and I do host a uh, podcast, Black Cyber Podcast, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get more minorities uh, into the cybersecurity field. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you, George. And uh, thank you for joining you're me welcome. today. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. No problem. Thank you for having me on the show. Oh, yeah. So our typical discussion is on uh, cyber threat hunting. And yes. uh, yeah, this is an active uh, cyber defense activity. Uh, in other words, it is a process of um, proactively and iteratively searching through networks to detect and isolate advanced threats that evade existing security systems or solutions. So uh, cyber threating, threat hun hunting has uh, traditionally been a manual process. But I would love to hear from you, uh, George, how, how can we get started uh, in cyber threat hunting? Uh, yes, um, we can get started in threat hunting uh, by subscribing to, mm -hmm. first let's talk about um, a cybersecurity analyst. That's more of a reactive role. Mm -hmm. um, threat hunting is proactive. You wanna, your best defense is the offense. Oh, yeah. So you don't wanna kind of wait and see what happens, like you said, before that um, advanced threats can evade your regular security systems. Yeah. So you wanna be proactively hunting uh, the system and it, you're gonna be hunting things that you don't really know about. Um, and the way to get an edge on that is uh, cyber threat intelligence. Yeah. Uh, you can get started by um, starting with some um, trusted cybersecurity uh, threat intelligence blogs. Yeah. Uh, Bleeping computers, one good blog. Uh, GB Hackers is another one. Um, Talos blog is another one. So you want to start going to these sites and start seeing the latest threats that are happening, uh, that are getting into systems. Mm -hmm. And they'll usually lay out how the hack happened, uh, mm -hmm. what systems it might have evaded. Uh, they'll give us some IOCs, um, indicators of compromise, um, IPs, domains, and you can usually take those things and you can go to your network and you can put those into a SIM or IDS, yeah. um, you know, things that can kind of detect those things, but it did may not have had that on there. You can put that IP in there and do like a 30 day search. You can put that domain and do a 30 day search. If that comes up, then that can get you going, um, uh, doing an investigation, see, see how far it's got in your system. Um, see how far the incident has got and you can block it immediately. Something you didn't know about, Mm -hmm. just being an analyst, just being reactive. So you can take these uh, IOCs and start searching and kind of get an edge. And once you find them and you block them, you can kind of go back to your systems after the fact, after you've taken care of the incident. Yeah. And you can say, okay, now that we have this, let's go back to the SIM and do some tuning. Let's go back to the IDS, uh, do some tuning endpoint security. Mm -hmm. add these IOCs, add the capabilities that we missed before. Mm -hmm. So we're using that threat intelligence to stop something and actually get better oh, yeah. uh, the next time something happens. Mm -hmm. um, I, I give a uh, example of cyber threat hunting and being a security analyst. Being a security analyst, being reactive is like owning a home, you lock the doors and you have a security system, that's fine. Uh, what if that person uh, knows how, uh, has an app and knows how to disarm that system? Mm -hmm. uh, what if you don't know that, um, what type of car they've been driving? Like if you had threat intelligence, adding that on there, mm -hmm. maybe you had a neighborhood watch app. And if you go to that neighborhood watch app, 
that's the cyber threat intelligence. And they say, hey, somebody's been breaking into houses. Mm -hmm. They're driving a small brown Hyundai Accord. Yes. Okay, now you know when you see that on your street, you may go in your yard, walk around. You see that car and they come up and say, oh, well, I'm here to fix such and such. And no, you're not. You're the guy here to rob my house. And I know that because I looked at the app. Yeah. So that's kind of an analogy of what threat hunting is mm -hmm. and how you can get that extra edge to be, the main thing is to be proactive, not reactive. Because if you're reactive, sometimes it's, it's probably already too late. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I agree with you. Um, uh, so thank you, George, for sharing with us. And uh, October being a cyber security awareness month, uh, we would like to hear from you or you can share with us a few tips on how users can stay safe online. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, one main tip I'll, I'll give, um, we talk about uh, security tools and having things in place that help you out. Um, but the human element is something we don't think about. Uh, phishing emails is still one of the most highly effective ways to get into a network. Oh, yeah. But one of the easiest ways mm -hmm. we, we all get busy. We, we kind of in a rush. Uh, but one tip I would definitely give is when you're scanning your emails, whether that's at home mm -hmm. or that's at work, um, people kind of use that excuse that they were in a hurry. Uh, they, if something look urgent, mm -hmm. that's usually a red flag. If something looks urgent or it's in a rush, yes, you, you want to kind of, that's when you want to take a pause. You want to kind of slow down and say, okay, um, do I know this person? Is it a trusted sender? If it has a link and I hover over it yeah. and they say they fr they're they from this organization and that URL looks totally different, then I probably don't need to click that link. Uh, I probably don't need to open attachments mm -hmm. in that email. Mm -hmm. um, if I know that person, you may want to reach out to that person by phone mm -hmm. and confirm that email, what that email is saying. Oh, yeah. uh, you don't want to respond to that person if you don't trust the email. So don't click... Uh, web links, don't click uh, attachments. Yes. And reach out to that person if you actually know that person by phone or another means other than that email. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I would say is for people, as far as awareness, mm -hmm. take a pause. If it doesn't look right. Do not trust it, do not open it. If you're in an organization, re report that to your uh, security team. Oh yeah. Thank you, George. We need to be cyber smart. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Oh, yeah. So uh, where can uh, our viewers find you? Um, viewers can find me on, uh, you can go to LinkedIn and search George McPherson. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also go to YouTube and search my podcast, uh, Black Cyber. Yeah. Black is spelled B-L-A-K, no C. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me, Veronica. All right.